Hi, I'm Ernie Paulson. I'm the Assistant News Director at KRK and Fox 16 in Little Rock. Uh, over the last uh, several uh, sweeps periods, we brought our investigative reporter Marcy Manley in to kind of do some digging for us. And one of the ones that we did that we especially liked was the, the liars list. Tell yes. us a little bit about, about that, how it came up. Well, it was really um, a sort of convalescence of a number of stories that came across um, for us. We came into contact with several members of law enforcement who people had alleged maybe weren't being honest in the process of them being investigated. Some cases had gotten thrown out of court. So we did some investigations on that. And then it kind of came around that we learned about this memo. We obtained this memo from the prosecutor's office and they were wanting to know about the outcomes of these internal investigations. So it was sort of the perfect storm um, for us to really take a look at this issue. Yeah, you had Ferguson in uh, Baltimore, some of those other things, kind of that uh, public trust in law enforcement. Right. The poll that came out from Reuters, what one in three people basically said, they don't believe uh, police officers you know, routinely tell the truth. So right, they that's believe that they routinely lied for their own benefit. And so we thought, okay, now we have a body of evidence that we can know that we have a local story here, but it also has sort of a greater context. Okay, so it starts, and this is probably the, the thing that I think stations can use the most, whatever reporter, or producer, or anchor that puts this together, FOI. Right. So freedom of information is going to really be your friend in this process. What you're going to want to do, or at least what I did, and I found it to be effective, is anytime you can make your FOI more specific, it's going to be better. So um, make a request to whatever law enforcement agency you want to include. We included the three largest um, metro agencies in our viewing area. And what I did was first I requested their policies, rules, and regulations so that you can find the very specific codes of conduct, if you will, um, that pertain to truthfulness. Once you find those out, then what I did in Arkansas, you can only get um, personnel files that relate to a suspension or a termination. And so then that's what I did. And again, this may change from market to market. Right. If your your FOI may allow you a much more expansive um, result, we just had to work within mm -hmm. the frame of what our FOI allows. And so once I knew what the policies number policy numbers were, I could make a really specific FOI request, give me all of the um, individuals that are currently on the force who have been found to have violated these specific policies um, that pertain to truthfulness or untruthfulness and choose your time period. And I believe we chose from 2010 back, although mm -hmm. some agencies gave us um, a greater response period. Yeah, and I think working with the, the three uh, biggest offices here in central Arkansas, still a lot, but I think if you get outside of that, it probably, uh, at least from your, just too much work. It's it's a lot of work, and sometimes you're having to sift through, uh, depending on how much information you want to get, how specific you want to get. Are you wanting to talk to each officer on the list? That was something that just wasn't possible for us in the time frame that we had, and so we kept it pretty general as far as numbers on the force, which roles they played, and I paid particular attention to people who I knew would be testifying in court, because that's one of the things that people are getting on off because the police can't mm -hmm. be trusted or you know they're playing these critical roles in testimony so special investigation units narcotics um, internal affairs we had one guy that that was the head of internal affairs in one of these agencies and had been found to have lied in the past and I think that was kind of one of the key things and it's someone that through through your reporting mm -hmm. had kind of come up time and time again so it just kind of made sense for us to look more in, more into him specifically. Right, and we didn't. We decided not to mention names specifically in this piece because we had sort of focused on um, them as individuals, and we made it more about the issue of is this um, law enforcement in general. And we had that great personal character that I think you'd probably be able to to, to dig up if you started looking at people who um, perhaps uh, represent individuals um, in cases of excessive use of force and that kind of thing. Yeah, and we talked about it. You know, one of the things I think with investigative pieces that just kind of gets lost from time to time is uh, we, you know, we don't tell stories, we don't have characters, it becomes very fact-driven and, and, and very boring. Dry. It's yeah. basically <laughs> a bunch of facts, you're, you're reading the newspaper on television. We didn't want to do that. No. So you got a character who's, you know, defends both officers, he's a former officer, but officers and, you know, uh, criminals. criminals. So he's fair. And, you know, again, talk a little bit about him and the importance of what, you know, our, our, our video that is our strong video that we book in. Yeah, I mean, that dash cam video, it's from 1992, and this guy just s simply had the wherewithal to keep this, and, and I think this scenario struck him when it happened, and that's why I held on to it. And basically how I found him was I just started looking for anecdotal evidence 
on the internet. I just started Googling, you know, liars, law enforcement, and the cities that I was looking into and came across him. And he was being an advocate on Facebook for, you know, police telling the truth, harsher punishment for, for police who lie, um, and ended up getting a really great interview. We had our bookends served, um, and that's like at the beginning and the end, we started with him and him saying, right there, that's an example of a police officer not telling the truth. And we ended with that as and, well. And it was by far our best video. So mm -hmm. smart to begin and end with that. Um, other things that we looked at is again going back to the, the the boring just you know you know just all you're seeing is graphics over graphics and you did a good job we limited the graphics right. we animated them uh, and fairness we wanted to make sure we didn't want this to be a, a slam by any means we wanted this to be a fair story so tell us who else that you interviewed in the piece we talked to both the police chief and um, the sheriff in Pulaski County those were the two main agencies who had a larger proportion and one and some of the more questionable officers on their force North Little Rock we included but they only had one officer so we went with the two agencies that had the largest and then we also made a note to talk to the prosecutor about if he felt like this was an ever-present problem problem and then also represented that this is 3% of the of the forces you know these represent about 3% of the number of people on the forces so putting it into perspective that you know it's not the entire force but we closed off with Reggie Koch's um, you know perspective that as a police officer when he was the one trying to tell the truth there's sort of this stagnation of silence when you know that lying is allowed so it kind of puts pressure on the good cops as well as the bad cops and not necessarily that, that one bad apple ruins, ruins it for the everyone. whole bunch and, and and the one thing too that we we wanted to focus on a little bit is i think you know in our business a lot of times you know we get press releases from police uh the sheriffs uh law enforcement <coughs> agencies in general and you know we catch ourselves like kind of almost like saying this happened mm -hmm. police say it happened i mean go this goes back to rodney king you know police say that you know he was out of control and they did you know just you know kind of minimal effort to get him down and whatever uh, we had a case in Jonesboro, a guy who, you know, police said he committed suicide. They're still looking into it. Maybe he was shot. It's still, you know, being investigated. So we can't always just take police at their word. We have to attribute. We have to look into it. And I think that, that you know, that's what the public needs from us. I, I, what I get from this piece is that we're looking into it and making sure that the people that we're supposed to entrust are being truthful. And that not every time that someone says that um, an officer did something inappropriate or there are allegations against them, that the person that's making those accusations are always wrong. In, in a lot of these cases, they were found to have been um, the results of complaints. So the people who are making complaints against the police aren't always cop haters. And on the flip side, not every police officer is a bad cop. So there was balance here, but I also think that um, it spoke to us as a, as a medium and us as an outlet saying, you know, we're checking into it. We could have stopped at the prosecutor's list and said, oh, well, there were only a dozen on their list, so no big deal. But once we started going to the real source, we found what the real story was. Well, and going back to that original study, one in three people don't believe that they're telling, that police officers are telling the truth. It's perception versus reality. It's our job to kind of get in there and try to find out. And it seems like there's some some reality to that. And, you know, um, one of the things that we talked about in, in presenting this story is, you know, we talk about a lot as reporters, you know, criminals aren't always convicted of all of the crimes mm -hmm. that they've committed. And in the same token, not every police officer that lies is going to be caught, but we have to take an objective look by the information that we have to give people a context of what their law enforcement is doing for them. All right. Well, thank you, Marcy, and thank you all. Hopefully this helped, and hopefully everyone has a great sweeps.